everybody, I'm Toby from Neonlight. Yeah. That's my partner, Jacob from Neonlight. <laughs> yes, and we're here for Computer Music to do a little walk through a track we lately finished with our studio mate Wintermute. He's sitting next to the camera behind it normally. So, yeah, the track uh, is called Influx, it will be out on Blackout Music, the label from Black Sun Empire. And yeah, when you see this video, maybe it's already released. So yeah, we want to show you something, how we did it, what was the idea and stuff like that. So, enjoy. Okay, first of all we start with drums. Um, the blue things in the screen you can see, so it's quite a lot. We show first some layering on the drums and the bass drum, because uh, yeah, bass drum and the drum bass track is quite important. We used uh, some samples. We we processed an older project, I guess, and we layered it up with some new sounds. So let's have a listen to this. So it's a quite simple pattern. Um, the bass drum has three layers. Kind of, yeah, talky thing to give it more for yeah for a sound for a nice sound at the top. The main sound is this one. I guess it's the normal neon light bass drum you, you heard in a couple of tracks. I guess we used it in the Teddy Killers remix of New Drums. So we pitched it a bit to the main note of the track. So what we have here is we just did some some weird cueing with the Pro Q. We yeah we use on nearly every track really good plugin. So we, we cut off the low frequencies to have more space for sub. So I think this is the general thing we do on, on, on kicks that they to control the low end a bit against to the sub bass that is not conflicting, having some rumbling sounds. So <clears throat> yeah, we did this here and yeah, let's listen to the sound without. It sounds much more yeah, much more energy, but yeah, we wouldn't, wouldn't that. So we smoothed it up, shelved the, the high end. So and then we did another layer to this. It's a, it's from a funk break. Uh, I think Florian Wintermere did it in with Superior Drummer. So brings more a fresh, a more original sound to the drums. And all together, yeah, it sounds like this. Uh, Jacob. Tell us more about the, <laughs> how okay. we did the pattern. Yeah, um, as you can see, um, you have um, um, a tag on every first note with all three layers every time. Here, here, here. And then we have some, yeah, some small um, sub, sub kicks, sub notes. Ghost notes, uh, yeah. Ghost notes, yeah. And um, yeah, sometimes we have only two layers and um, here for example we have only this one layer so it brings more more dynamics to the to the kick drum yeah it's a bit like the, the yeah like the like when a real drummer is playing the bass drum he has not always the same the same attack um, so it's it feels more natural more life yeah more life yeah and it also was the idea you can hear that later um, <coughs> compared with the, the bass line so it gives them more, yeah, the, the vibe is more alive and a bit different from time to time. You can see these three groups here of the bass drum and it's nothing going on here in the insert plugins because it sounds cool as it is. But why we do this normally is um, to, to have more slots for side chaining. So when we have the bass drum, we'll side chain the sub bass, maybe some parts of the reese bass, some, some cymbals. Maybe just to crash the hit on the one of each ball, stuff like that. So sometimes you don't, it's not fitting in this, so you need more. And then we, that was our idea to make another group. So bass, bass drum one is going to bass drum two group. It's still the same sound, but you have more slots to make a send effect for sidechain. That's the neon light thing. <laughs> so, yeah. like, but we don't, we don't need it every time and we also started to reduce um, the, the side chain in general. Yeah. Um, it's more thing from yeah. a year ago maybe we were much more do side chaining 
was fucking things up. <laughs> so, but in this project, you can see there's just four side chains going on on the bass drum. So, let's go with this. Sure, you have a bass drum. You also need a snare. Let's play it together. <clears throat> yeah, sounds like this. Um, maybe you recognize that we have the same clicky sound on the snare as on the kick. So this is this layer. Yeah. Sounds a bit like, yeah, it's cut it out of a loop. We did. And yeah, it's, you hear the, the little click at the end. It sounds a bit like a, a hi or a shake a bit. Yeah, and in the, normally we don't like this. We want things clean and separated, but this time it, it worked perfect together in the track. So we said, let's, let's do this. Don't care about too much. And yeah, this thing is sounding like this without Yeah, did a low cut, some boosting on the attack frequencies around 260 and also pushed the high end to bring out the sound we want from the sample. Um, so the main snare drum is, is this thing. Yeah, without the cueing sounds a bit bit too fat so yeah we also cleaned here the low end make the attack more precise to the to the other snares that it works together we also did some some side EQing mid side EQing so sometimes it can make some some problems in the attack so when you have too much side signal the attack can be a bit glitchy or not it's not too precise so yeah we did this it's how much is it 550, so the attack is more happening. <coughs> yeah, the 500 grams are um, a problem nearly in every sigma. So we sometimes, when we look at the at the final bounce, we, we have also a gap in <laughs> 500 hertz, and sometimes we we have to push it up a bit more because we, there's also um, yeah. A, 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 a precise amount of energy that you need. If you if the gap is too low, um, yeah, there's something missing on the track. Yeah, uh, but in this case, um, yeah, it it prevents us from too much um, yeah, odd sounding frequencies. And then we have a third layer. Is a, is a yeah, it's a clap. Quite a simple thing. So we cleaned this thing up again with an EQ, make it much um, less loud and we did a small room on it, a really small room so you can't really hear it. It's for, the, for the feeling. Yeah. And the same with the kick drum, we grouped this thing up. So here you go. And as you can see, we also didn't any processing on the group because it's not normal for us, but this time it worked as it is. And why should we do a compressor or a limiter or something like that on it when it's sounding cool and perfect yeah. to the track? So, but again, you can see um, that we used some side chaining in here, yeah, just and there, yeah. yeah, just here. The rest is empty. <coughs> yeah, it's kind of a, it's our our standard preset, so to say, to use these three groups for bass drum and for snare drum. Um, yeah, and what I wanted to show is um, maybe you heard it. Um, we have no attack on the clap. We yeah slide it in here because we have enough attack from the other two layers. Um, uh, that's also. Often, often you get a problem when you have too too many attacks at the same time. Sometimes they are not exactly on the same point. Face. Um, yes, yeah, and facing. Some facing so. stuff, and um, yeah, we, That's in the past problem. we had some problems with that, but <laughs> now we are pro <laughs> to manage it. Um, yeah, well, it's not a, it's not a secret. I, I know that nearly everybody does it like this. Um, 
Yeah, and the mo most um, the attack is most, the most attack samples. Yeah, the main attack is from the first sample, and these are more for for sound and for for width. And so on. The other things we use to to make a good drum loop, good rolling drum. So we have some rights over here. They are mono, so we we use to we they have this. They have their own crew. And then we used the alloy. So it's, it's a nice tool to use the alloy for, for groups, for example, because you have there's an equalizer in it. You can do stuff with the transients. You have some stuff for dynamics of compression and also a limiter. So it's a, it's a multi-tool to yeah, especially in groups, you can do lots of things with one plugin. You don't need a bunch of things. So, just to explain this, <clears throat> so what we did is, especially for all these rights here, um, to put it together because the sound is quite the same. So, it's it's logic for us to, to group these things up, and what you can hear. That we, yeah, that we make it more the attack. Yeah, we, we shortened, we shortened the release, the, the release yeah. a bit, and um, yeah, we brought out a bit more of the attack. And then let's show the dynamics again. Yeah, and um, yeah, after that we have. Um, um, yeah, a um, um, compressor um, to, to bring up more, a bit more the, the loudness. It's a really fast working compressor. Um, yeah. Yeah, the limit does not really work. That's what he said. Okay. So, and then to the symbols, we added some, some quite standard hi hat stuff. So, some. Let's mute this. A really simple pattern, quite straight, because we did some some ghost notes in the kicks. So yeah, we decided to make a really straight hi hat groove, and yeah, it's it's a close hi hat. Another little ride, which is going to another group. The sounds alone sounding sometimes a bit boring or not that crazy, but when you, you put it together and mix it with the other sounds, then you, you get the whole the whole structure and then it makes sense. Um, we have a shake shaker here also, which is has a room on it, I guess. We have a, a really small delay on it. And this is kind of a standard ride layer we, we use in a lot of drums to make it more splashy. Sounds a bit noisy, yeah, noisy not so nice, but yeah, as I said, when you put it, things together, it makes more sense. So we cleaned this quite a lot. This. Um, this track is uh, a good example to, mm. to show one part of our side chain compression disaster. <laughs> For this time we have a, a sidechain trigger, a separated signal that's just a, a sample and it's going to a channel which has no output, kein bus, no, no output, so you can't hear what's happening here, but it's, it's the trigger for our sidechain, for, especially for this loop, for this right loop, so when we put all together then you see here the effect, sorry. Yeah, you can see it's working really hard, and without you can hear the sound. So, and the same as with the shaky thing here, we use the same same trigger. So we do this to have no 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 problems with the kick and the snare attack, because it's just on the on the straight notes. So, yeah, 
kick, snare, snare, kick, snare. Okay, so let's play the things together, the drums. As you can hear, here's a little a breakdown. So let's have a look on this before we go into the groups. Um, yeah, in the track, in the arrangement, there was yeah, we just decided to make a little little breakdown, a little funk break. So it's a, a thing we also worked out in, in Superior Drummer before, and yeah, we have this acoustic loop. This is a layer to the snare, and also some rolls. So and. On this thing, there's quite a lot going on on the channel. This is the original sound of the snare. Totally different, and yeah, we did some heavy EQing. Our first, we did the camel fat just to did some distortion, put some tube on it, and yeah, some uh, exciter is not, but some. The mesh, so it, it's distortion at all, <coughs> and also the compressor, so it's mm. working quite heavy. Um, yeah, to bring out the, the snappy attack. Yeah, a little EQ after this to clean the signal again because we won't have the low here. You can see the attack around 130, so we cut this out. And another compressor after this to give it to make the sound more yeah longer and a bit more how can I say a bit more splashy yeah fat more fat fat yeah. yeah so and with the original sound of the snare it things come together and sound as we want it. It's just the snare and this is the layer and uh, the rows together. Yeah, cool. That's the part and we have this this section going on a couple of times in the track. So it's kind of a, a leading element of this tune. Maybe one thing before again, before we go to the groups again, um, the arrangement of the track is like this part. The first um, 32 bars are twisted with some ghost kicks, and then there's an interlude, and then you it comes back with an odd second drop. That the kicks are going more straight. It's just to show you to have a listen. You can hear it in the track as well. So. Well, sorry, not everything. Yeah. It's more, more of the traditional two-step. Just to show you that. And um, yeah, yeah. Well, once more the, in the beginning we, <coughs> um, yeah, we cut out some. <coughs> yeah, so it feels a bit more, more heavy, more slow. Um, yeah, we cut out some. Yeah, yeah, it's not uh, rolling that much like in the second or the third part. We showed you before we had some some grouping up the bass at the kick drums and the snare drums, and also some some hi hat stuff. But as you can see, we 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 not really work much in the groups in this project because um, mm -hmm. a lot of of the sounds we used we have to tell you because it's quite important for this project. Um, this project is not from scratch so we worked on this in some stages before because yeah we, we had the idea to make a track with Wintermute and we did maybe two more more or less two tracks <laughs> and then we ah, it's not cool we don't really like it so we had a lot of good sounds already and then we, we were looking for a good idea for the good catchy thing and that's the reason that is not too much going on in this group especially here in drums 
which group is quite important or coming now is the summing <coughs> of all drum sounds. So this group drum sums brings together the kicks, the snares, the hi hat cymbals, all the things we have for drums, percussions. And in this case we again used the camel fat because it's, uh, it's a quite handy tool for this. Um, it's doing not that much, but mainly here in the distortion section. It gives again some tube to it, to everything, so it makes it a bit more warmth, make it a bit more, well, a bit more balls to, to, to the low end. Yeah, the exciter this time is working a bit. Just a, just a little bit. Yeah, um, just a little bit. Yeah, but uh, we, we didn't use it. Um, we didn't use the whole sound from Calfat. We only uh, did a mix. Yeah. Here, we had a mix uh, because the full tube compression was um, too much crushing. Let's, let's, <coughs> yeah, crushing let's the listen to the, when the mix is on 100%. <coughs> So it sounds a bit too harsh, it's uh, not too it's dirty, not nice, yeah. so yeah. and then we... But we only wanted a little bit of that. Okay, so yeah. And what we did also is another group, it's for another parallel compression of all drums, so we did a parallel compression of this group, drum sum, it's called, with this drums P for parallel. And uh, we used for this um, the Elysia Impressor. And you can see here how it's working. So it's, it's going to 10, 5, around 12. <laughs> so it has a, a quite heavy yeah, impact on this crew. So yeah, that's the thickness is crushed a lot, see. compressed a lot, and uh, again we use the, the color fit, but um, yeah, to add more tube compression and uh, tube saturation. Right? Uh, yeah, so it, it makes the the track really thick. And um, yeah, we we added it just just a little bit to to give it a bit more. Um, yeah, and heavy, heavy, heavy weight. So yeah, when we play it without, um, it's maybe five to ten percent of of volume and everything. But yeah, in the mix, in the mix, you can hear it much much more when it's missing this screw. Okay, and yeah, just at the end, and we we sums up all the things together again because um, we. We want to have it tight, so again the camel fat. Um, why why we use it is to um, it's kind of a, a good limiting plugin as well. So when you put it in the beginning of a chain of insert effects, so maybe when you have some peaks going over zero, it's good to control it a bit. So the clipping in it is quite nice, so it sounds not not messy, so it's not distorting the sound too much. So when you just leave it as a blank plug in, it's really cool to control the peaks. Yeah. So that's the idea behind and the trash too, a really nice plug in. Um, yeah, it's also on this group. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we use it. Um, it was uh, um, a setting from uh, Wintermew and he uses um, a two stage tape saturation. The first stage um, you can see there's no um, no pre and no drive um, but it, it, is, it, is, it is still working a little bit and um, yeah, the second tape saturation stage um, gives a bit more drive, more drive yeah. and uh, we have a really slight um, dynamics with the, uh, it's a maximum 4 dB and uh, yeah, uh, 
you switch on off the trash that you can hear the on off okay yeah so, so just to, to get a bit a little bit more of um, RMS yeah and to make it easy for everyone <laughs> not just for us um, what we did with all these groups is first we have different layers of bass drums and snare drums so we group this to a group and in this case we did a little parallel compression of kick and snare only to make these two things together sounding nice because this makes the level of the drums so when kick is maybe peeking too much out and the snare is too less the sound could be nice but it's could be a problem later in the process with all the other sounds so it needs to be the same level the same peaks so this is one thing, the other is um, this, the rides, the cymbals, hi-hats, so the same, you have to group things up together to, to be sure maybe the things which have more transients, that you keep the transients and when you have sounds you want to have a release, which are more for the background to fill up the sounds, they need not that much transients but they need the space in the mix, so this is good to do it in groups as we did and at the end we did um, again some parallel compression on all the drums kick snare cymbal hi-hats etc to bring a, a proper drum signal with everything with transients and with also with energy we you need in a, in a drum and bass track we prefer to produce and after that we put the, the parallel signal and the original drum signal from the original drum bus again together to have these two signals controlled. That's important. That's it. Drums. What's next? I think it's time to get on the green things. So we have yeah, two main things in this track are sure the bass and also the hook line, this simple synth step. Um, let's go first with with the bass, the main bass pattern. Let's play it. Yeah, that's it. What we did is, first of all, we had one main sound of massive. So this is the, the sound we started with, um, so we played in the beginning the riff of the bass, I can show you later the, the massive a bit more, um, let's check the pattern, it's quite simple, so it's just one note and then here you have a semitone up, down, down, sorry, <laughs> right, so it's quite a standard arrangement, so as you can see, so the movement in this sound is not coming from the pattern itself, but it's coming more from the synth. So yeah, it's quite simple. We have one oscillator, um, two filters going on, a band reject and the acid one, and. This LFO with the 5 is bringing the movement, so we have here the ratio on 3 and 16, so this makes the, the trippy vibe in the sound. And when you, in combination with making the pattern, you get this the sound, the groove. In this massive patch, sure, it's just one oscillator. Um, one important thing of this sound is the modulation oscillator. When I put it off, it sounds like this, it's, then it's just the LFO. And with this together, it brings a phasing on this oscillator. And you get the sound and the, and the higher frequencies, which makes it more interesting and more, more grimy. Also this... Um, Sign shaper. Yeah. 
gives gives some beef to the sound, also the tube. When you do these things off, it sounds kind of boring. Nothing. So it's really distortion, this phasing, and the LFO makes the sound. That's all we got time for it for now. Um, if you want to see the whole video, um, you just have to buy the latest issue of Computer Music. Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in-depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android and in print.